Uh, hello, so today we are doing this problem called max consecutive ones three. Um, it's a medium problem, and uh, the problem says that we have an array of zeros and ones, and we can change up to k values from zero to one. And we want to return the length of the longest consecutive subarray that contains only ones here. And so if we look at this example, we have we have uh, these ones, we can change up to two zeros to one, we can flip up to two zeros for, um, to ones, and uh, yeah, so here how can we do that? So the up the to get the most number of ones, we can flip these two zeros, um, or we can flip this zero and this zero here, and that way we get um, six ones, consecutive ones. We can also flip these two zeros and get the same number. The important thing is the number we get here, um, and so is the maximum. Um, for this one, we can flip up to k equal to 3, and the optimal way we can get the max ones is to flip the zeros here, the two zeros here, this zero, that way we get this entire um, chunk of ones. And so this gets us 10 ones. And the values of a are either 0 and 1. And so, and this is the constraint of the value of a. So, how can we um, solve this problem? So, let's look at this. So, basically, um, if we uh, let's just do this here. Um, so, let's take this one here. So, the goal is to get the length of the of the longest. So, the, our goal here is to get the length. Of the longest um, consecutive contiguous or consecutive ones which is basically um, the contiguous subarray with only ones um, and we can get that by doing um, flips up to k flips of zeros to ones right And so, same thing here. Um, there is a sliding window technique where we need this problem. We need to think about um, using it whenever we have a contiguous. Um, the question asks us for a maximum, minimum, a sum, or some other like constraint on a on a contiguous uh, subarray, contiguous part of subarray. So whenever we have something that we are looking to get in a contiguous part of a subarray. And the and the thing we are looking for is a max, a min, a sum. We we directly need to think about sliding window technique. Um, this technique has three two variants at least, maybe more, but two two most important variants, which are um, a fixed size window and uh, and the variable size window. So this problem here, let's think about how can we apply this to it. So we know we can get, um, we can do k flips. That's one thing we know. So what we can do is construct a window first that takes, that just go, tries to accumulate as much once as it can. So here we have one, so we keep trying. So basically our window is going to have start and an end. And we just, it's once, so we still haven't consumed k. So we're trying to construct a window so construct a window that uses k flips to get the max ones we can ones we can starting from the beginning so just constructing the first window that we can um, that we can work work from and so that way here we still have ones we haven't consumed our k which is equal to 2 and so Still, our, we haven't used two values. Here we have used one value. So let's say zeros we have used here. Zeros are one, are equal to one. And now here we have used two. And so we kind of, we try to, to get the number of ones here. So the number of ones after flipping here would be five. So this is currently the max window that we can get. So this is the max ones. But when we get here, our number of zeros exceeded k. So as soon as, as soon as 
the number of zeros the number of zeros exceeds k we contract the window or um, contract the window basically and so this technique is the variable size window that we are going to be using here because it's not a fixed size it's not like it's a window of four values and we always keep only four values it's we try to get as much as possible because we want the max ones and once our constraint is no longer valid which is the constraint that we can't have more than k zeros in our window then we need to contract the window and contracting the window means just keep making s small until the constraint is valid again so we keep making the start smaller so here our zeros is still three so we are still not in the constraint um we still the constraint is still not valid and so we contract again uh, our a is still here our e and uh, here it's still our um our end is t our start is t our uh, number of zeros is still three at this point um, now if we now at that at th then we we can keep contracting now at this place here we still have we still have three zeros and so this condition is still not valid so we go again and now now we have just two zeros right so our condition is valid now so now we can advance k so basically when condition when condition is valid is valid um, advance advance end and when condition not, is not valid or while so while condition is valid advance e while condition is not valid advance uh, start until it becomes valid and so here now it's valid so we advance a e number of zeros is still two so our condition is valid and here let's just keep track of the number of ones let's, let's um, imagine that i kept track of the number of ones i didn't but um yeah so here we have just one one uh and just we keep going since the condition is still valid we have two we keep going the condition is still valid we have three keep going the condition is still valid we have four we keep going he we go here actually since we have two zeros sorry the, the that we have flipped and the condition is valid so we have six and so here it becomes six and now the a condition is no longer valid since we have three zeros so we need to advance start so we advance start again here our condition number of zeros become um, our number of zeros become how, how many now we have just two and so the condition is valid again but we no longer can advance this pointer the end pointer so we are done and our result is six uh, as we said here so the main idea is while the condition is valid keep expanding the end when the condition becomes no longer valid we uh, advance the start so that we can get a, until we get a window that um, makes the condition valid and then start doing the end again and keep doing this until uh, at the end and always while doing this um, keep track of the goal function that we want so that's the idea now let's um, let's code this up um, so the the solution to this is pretty straightforward so what we said we need is we need to keep the number of zeros track of the number of zeros we need the start and we need the end so this is actually python so we need this and so the number of zeros starts out as zeros the starts start out at end let's just not keep track of end here uh, and then we need our result the max one the max uh, ones or max res let's call it res let's call this one just our result here and uh, zero right now uh, we want to keep expanding the end let's call it in the range of or just to make this 
seem like the, the condition, the code we just described. So let's start in the equal to zero. And uh, and what we are doing is while end is less than the length, which is what we said here, when end is no longer, is, uh, reaches the end, we are done. So the length of the array. So we are going to check if the value here is zero, we are going to increase the number of zeros that we have, which is the same thing we said here. So if a end is equal to zero, we are going to increase the number of zeros we have. And then we are going to check if we have, if our condition is valid, which is what we said here, while our condition is not valid, advance at start until it becomes valid, right? So we are going to, what does condition not valid means? Condition not valid means we have more than k zeros because we can't flip more than k zeros. So that that we shouldn't have that. And so we are going to check while our condition is no longer valid, which means this. So condition not no longer valid, not valid. What did we say we need to do? We need to advance the start pointer, right? So we advance our start pointer only if. Um, so. So we, we, we need to advance our pointer, right, when the condition is not valid. But another thing we need to do is we change the value of our start, right? And so we need to check if the value of the start value becomes zero, then we need to increase, uh, we need to decrease. So if the value that we are going to advance from, so we are going to advance, let's say we are, we are here, we are going to advance to this one. If this value was zero, then the num our number of zeros need to de decrease, right? And then we advance. And after that, we just put val the right value in res here. What is that? That's just the current, the number, the the size of the current window because the current window we know that we are keeping it in in the in the condition, like we are keeping the condition valid for that window. So all we need to do to get the number of ones is take the size of the window because that will have the k zeros at most and the ones that are in the window. And so we can just do max res and get the size of the window, which is end minus start plus one. And at the end, we can just return that res. But something we shouldn't forget is increase our end value. Uh, so this is actually lowercase k. Okay, so that passes. Let's run this. Yeah, so that passes. A quick optimization here is we don't need to define this end here. That just makes it a little bit um, ugly. So we can just say for end in range of this. Um, and that's pretty much it. Oh, we, we don't need to do this end anymore since it's done by the range. And that's pretty much it. It should pass. Yep, okay. So that's it for now. Um, this was the an application of the sliding window technique with, with a variable size window. Um, it's a very useful technique. Um, so keep it in mind and uh, see you next time. Bye.